I'm going to start you off today with a question. And the question is an easy one, I think. Here it is. What are these? Not a trick question, just think. What are these? Perhaps a number of things come to mind. One thought, maybe, that's a ridiculous easy question. That's Apple. That's Burger King. These are logos. Don't treat us like we're children. We know what logos are. I know you do. Too bright. The reason I leave it open-ended is I want you to think about what logos are built from and what logos represent. We know that these logos include uh, an organization, a retail company, uh, food and beverage companies. All organizations use logos. Logos are colors, words, designs, things that help us associate with an organization or a product. Here's an example. Okay, here's your example. I may tell you that I am thinking of an organization. It's a company that's international in that it wasn't started here in the US. And the name of this company includes both a V and a W. Know what it is? Let me help you out. Know what it is now? Chances are you probably do. Some of you may have immediately thought of Volkswagen as the international company that started with a V and had a W. Others, perhaps, were still wondering when I pulled this recognizable logo onto the screen. Logos, images, designs, colors, words, are things that help us associate with organizations, companies, or their products. Said another way, logos help us remember stuff. And Logos are part of the branding process in business. You know what this family of ambivalent bees means. It means this is your buzzword for the day. Your buzzword is branding. Branding, use of a name, term, symbol, or design, or any combination thereof to identify a product and or an organization. So branding, like in the case of Volkswagen, helps us associate with the company. Maybe if I had said an international company that starts with a V and W and also is a manufacturer of automobiles, perhaps you would have thought of the name of the company earlier. That's because products also help us to identify organizations and products often include logos. Again, we're getting to the same idea here. Companies want us to know when we see their stuff. Seems logical, right? Why is that, though? Point is, we'll buy it, right? And we'll buy it for a few reasons. One, it's easy. If I know your stuff, then I'll buy your stuff. Seems like that's a simple way to say it, but often that's the case. So if I know that the Volkswagen Beetle or Bug here is an option for my automobile, perhaps I'll buy it because it's easy. Maybe I'll buy it because it's fast. I'm not talking about the car here, I'm talking about the process will be fast, both on the selling end and the buying end, if I'm already familiar with the product. Here's an example. I went to China, and I don't read Chinese. I can hardly speak Chinese. Uh, and when I went to the grocery store, I was pretty unfamiliar with most Chinese snack products. So when I was attempting to buy my students' snack foods, I was at a loss unless I could recognize brand names. In the snack aisle, I found the Chinese equivalent of Lay's potato chips, a Lay's bag with Chinese writing. Did I know exactly what 
the flavor was I was getting. No, it was something weird like uh, spiced pork or tomato and garlic. I don't know. Uh, but the point is, I was able to identify the Lay's logo, the Lay's brand, which made it easier and faster for me to buy a snack. If I didn't identify Lay's as an option, I would have walked up and down the aisle of snack foods and picked whatever off the shelf at the end of the day because I didn't have any idea. I was familiar with Lay's, which allowed me to make a purchase I felt comfortable with. Oftentimes, branding has something to do with your image as well. In the case of potato chips, maybe not so much. Uh, buying Lay's potato chips over Cape Cod or whatever brand doesn't say a whole lot about your image, who you are as a person. Buying automobiles, however, certainly does. This is a really iconic advertisement from the 60s, when Volkswagen first introduced their automobiles to the US market. We see the logo down here, the brand, and this, Think Small. <clears throat> Think Small is an interesting bit of copy to see in an advertisement for vehicles, given a lot of cars are talking about being big and powerful. Uh, but this played into the image that Volkswagen was trying to create. They wanted to be something different, something unique, to challenge the way of thinking for the typical automobile buyer. And they managed to do that through the brand that they created. Something to remember. Brands help us remember things. In my Lay's example, I told you when I was in China, seeing the Lay's brand helped me feel familiar and therefore comfortable with my purchase. I'm going to talk to you a bit about steps in brand familiarity. And brand familiarity simply means what it sounds like, how well a customer recognizes and accepts a company's brand. The important bit to remember about brand familiarity is that it affects the four P's, or the marketing mix. So as a marketer, I need to sell my product and market my product based on how familiar a customer may be with my brand. If I'm selling Lay's potato chips, I don't need to convince someone to come and try my product. The chances are most Americans have tasted a Lay's potato chip. If I'm introducing Lay's potato chips to a country that has never distributed Lay's, my message is different. It's, hey, come on and try our chips. 